Let us first have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. Welcome to ADMC Investigations. This video is part two of a series. Check the playlist in the future for more. We have a lot of exclusive content coming just like this. We put out multiple videos each week, so if you're a fan of consistent true crime videos, make sure you're subscribed. The absolute best way to support this channel is to subscribe. And if you appreciate what we're doing here, hit that like button. Let us know we're moving in the right direction. Okay, enough rambling. Let's get into it. This is a horrendous story with some absolutely abhorrent people. Vera Jo Regal was a 24-year-old mother of one. She lived in Findlay, Ohio, with a family that some have compared to the Manson family. There is an excellent documentary that I would urge all of you to watch that will give you a very good idea of what these people are. The link is in the description below. Vera was essentially a slave to these people, and at 24 years old, she had the mental capacity of an 8-year-old. She was completely taken advantage of. These interviews and interrogations that we will release over the next few weeks will tell her story like it's never been told before, and we'll make sure that these scumbags have the light shined on them, and Vera Jo Regal will not be forgotten. The second interview in the series is of Shannon Brooks, who married into the Brooks family by way of Michael Brooks. This is her first interview. She would have one more, and that is coming as well. She obviously had some knowledge of what took place that night. This is how her first interrogation went. Leave. Anything changed? Address or anything? Mm -hmm. Want to talk with you uh, on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Phone number same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what brings you up here today? Well, I had gotten some information that um, that I was getting arrested. Okay. Because I guess um, the interview I did on TV, Channel 11 News, and I'm being told by a lot of different people that I'm the one that's going to go to jail for it. And I mean, I came up here, you know, to tell everybody because I'm getting harassed on Facebook mm -hmm. and I'm getting called, you know, a killer. I'm getting told that I had a part in it. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know what they were going to do when they left the house with her. And as I told everybody else, I wanted to stop them, but Danny put a knife to me and told me if I did anything that he was going to kill me. I didn't believe him at the time because I didn't think he would do it. And, you know, and when they got back and they told me everything they did, I wanted to call the cops. I wanted to get the phone and call so bad. But Danny told me if I picked up that phone, that he would do the same thing to me. And I was just so scared. And as you can tell, you can probably tell I'm scared right now. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just, I was crying all day today because I, I mean, and then I got people telling me that I should, I should be the next one to die and everything else. And I mean, I'm just, I'm getting so scared and everything, and I just, I mean, you know, I've never been in trouble with the cops of mine. I mean, you can look at my record. I've never been in trouble at all. Okay. And I just, you know, this is scary. It's really scary. And I just, you know, I mean, I don't know what else I can do to help you guys. I mean, I, I'm, I've been trying to go over in my head everything they told me and everything that happened that day. and. I thought of a couple more things that, you know, if that would help you out at all. Okay. Of, of what happened. I don't know if, you know, maybe Sherry told you guys or not. Um, but they had a, they took a belt. I told you about the belt part, right? You mentioned a belt. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they had a, it was a, it was a piece to a bike. Like, it goes on the bike neck where the handlebars are. Okay. Um, and it had bolts on it. And they put that around the belt, and they slammed it, and they hit her in the back with it. Mm -hmm. And they just, they continuously kept hitting her like that. And Danny was stomping on her head, and um, I got scared. And then I sat on the bed next to Sherry, and I couldn't breathe. I was getting really scared. I was like, I was having a panic attack or something, and I was shaking real bad. Mm -hmm. And then they, um... <sighs> 
Amy and Nicole made them drink her hit their pee. They made her drink that and um, ate dog poop off of the floor. And um, they made her use a uh, a um, a toothbrush up her behind, and um, they made her brush her teeth with it afterwards. Okay. Um, just I think I mean trying to think. Uh, they made her drink um, dish soap. I think it was or laundry soap or. I wasn't in the kitchen or anything. It was you know, it was some kind of soap, and she kept she kept saying her throat was burning her, and they um they had uh, I think it was called um mace or pepper spray or something, mm-hmm. and they sprayed it in her face, and her face was burned and her eye was swollen shut and stuff. And they hit her in the face real hard and made her lips swell up really bad. Um, and uh, it was just, I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, you know, I just, we all, I, I was so scared. I just, I've never seen anybody do that to someone before. And I didn't know what to do. I. I mean, I sat on the couch, you know, thinking somebody else would, you know, pick up the phone and, you know, call the cops or something. And I just think that everybody in the house was scared because no one's ever seen Danny like that before. And I mean, that was the first time I ever met him. I didn't know him before then. And I mean, he had just gotten out of prison and no one would tell me why. And, you know, I, you know, it's just, I got really scared and stuff. And my husband, you know, when he found out that Danny had held a knife to my um, my left side of my neck, my husband, you know, he was trying to protect me and stuff. So, you know, he like, he got in between me and Danny and told Danny, you know, to stop because he was going to depart and so on really bad. And I just, I mean, I'm just, I guess I'm just like really scared. I don't know. I'm just, I'm really worried. I can't sleep at night now because I'm just worried that, you know, something's going to happen. <laughs> I just, I'm, yeah, nervous, I guess. So you just met Danny? Yeah. On Saturday? No. Oh, um, when did you meet him? When he first showed up, which I don't know what day it was. I had just got home from my aunt's house. Um, it was last week, so I think it was Monday of last week that he got there. And that was like, I didn't meet him till Tuesday because he got there at like midnight or something and I was asleep. So I met him on Tuesday and that was like the first time I've ever met him and Mm -hmm. no one told me anything about him. Um... Yeah, and that's, that's some information, you know, there's some more there than what you had told me the other day. Mm-hmm. So maybe we need to go over, you know, Saturday's events again. I think that's a good idea. We'll if, start going over the events again. I remember, I took my medicine earlier. I got um, issues with my head and stuff from an accident four years ago. So okay. I take medicine and it kind of makes my memories and stuff a little but I can try to you, I mean, I mean you, right now you feel okay though I mean, you know what you know day it is today uh, I know it's uh, Tuesday I think Tuesday right? yeah, yeah Tuesday. you know what date it is yeah <laughs> it's a 29 okay. yeah <laughs> okay I mean you right now you're feeling okay yeah I mean, I mean as far as going time. back to Saturday I mean I can try to I'm not you know, when I told you on Sunday, I hadn't taken my medicine, so I had good memories. But okay. I mean, I can try to. I mean, okay. So okay. Well, let, let's do that. Let's let's start with Saturday. Okay. Um, I mean, I know in the morning you got up and you went to the uh, food food giveaway. Yeah, giveaway, food giveaway, food giveaway food. They call yeah. It, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what time it was. I don't remember offhand now. It was, was five thirty in the morning. morning yeah, okay. Who did you go with? Um, I know Kevin my husband, then. Michael, Kevin, and Scotty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you remember around what time you guys got home? 10.30, 11, somewhere around there. Who all was at the house when you got home? 
Sherry, Garth, Zachary, Chucky, Danny and Nicole, and then of course, you know, me, Michael, Kevin, and Scotty when we got home, so. Okay. And the baby was there. Okay. Vera, did you say Vera? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Vera too, sorry. Sorry, just wanted to make sure. Um, what was everybody doing? Sleeping. They were all sleeping when we got home. Uh, Chucky, Chucky woke up right when we got home, so then Chucky was up. And Vera was still asleep. Ma, uh, Sherry was, she was kind of dozing off after she took her medicine, so okay. but the boys were still asleep. Okay. So Sherry was sleeping in her room? Right. In the bed? Mm hmm Where was uh, Vera at? She was in her room on the bed. Okay. Where did Vera sleep there? Um, there's a room off of the living room. It's got okay. yellow walls, and that was her room in there. She had her bed and okay. dresser and stuff. And that, so she wasn't in there, though. She was in Sherry's room? No, she was in her she room. Was in her yeah, room. she was in her room, Sorry. yeah. Okay. Um, so go on from there. What mm. did what, you do after that when you got home? After I got home, I, uh, I went upstairs. Or no, no. I'm trying to think. Um... I went and changed the baby because she was quiet and she had just woken up. And by then, Sherry had woken up. So I went in and changed her and I got her dressed and we fed her. And then. Danny and Nicole had come downstairs. I had given the baby a bath after she was done eating. I think I messed up part of it. Sorry, just relax. Uh, yeah, after she was done eating, that, then I got gave her a bath and got her dressed. Yeah. And then Danny and Nicole were sitting on the couch watching TV. Then Vera had gotten up to change Sherry's on the pads on her feet. Okay. Um, trying to think, uh, Vera said something or did something that she shouldn't have did, I guess. I'm not sure. And, oh, that's right. She looked at Danny for something, for some reason. And Nicole got mad and she like punched her in the back of the head, made her go forward. Um, and then they kicked her in her side from the back. And then you actually saw this, you heard that, yeah. Stuff? I, I saw, I, I told her, I went in and I said, You guys need to stop, you're gonna hurt her. And even Sherry said it. And by that time, you know, all the boys were awake and everybody was awake in the house, just mostly sitting on the couches watching TV. Um, and then Kevin and Michael, excuse me, had, um, had left to go, um, They left to go somewhere. I can't remember where. Um, and then Vera, she got up to go to the bathroom, and I I looked over and I seen Nicole follow her into the bathroom, and I was sitting on the couch watching the baby, you know, so she wouldn't like go in and step on mom's feet or anything. So I was sitting in the living room watching her play and stuff. And I heard Nicole in there yelling at Vera in the bathroom. And Vera was, she was like crying or saying something. And then 
Nicole comes back down, and she's laughing and smiling, and she's got her hand like this on her face. And then I asked her what happened, and she says, you don't want to know. And I said, okay. And then Vera comes out, and she's her hair is all wet, and she's covering her face like this, like her eyes are hurting her. And when Nicole was, you know, out of the room, I asked Vera what happened, and Vera said that they put her head in that Nicole had put her head in the toilet and made her drink the water. And then that's also when they made her use the toothbrush up her behind and brush her teeth with it. So she was kind of gagging and stuff when she came out and she got a drink. And then Danny had, it was either, I think it was Danny took the ketchup and poured it on her head and um, I went in the kitchen I said okay that's enough you guys need to stop now and I told Vera to go back in Sherry's room after she had gotten the ketchup out of her hair and she, I told her you know just go in there and sit down you know just don't do anything you know just don't make her mad and then Danny looked at me and said why are you protecting her and I said because you guys are going far enough, you know, you guys need to stop this, you're going to parting her. So, she went back in there and sat down, and then after Michael and Kevin had gotten home, I had went upstairs um, for, for, um, I, I went upstairs for something. Then I came back downstairs and I heard like a, a noise or like something coming from Sherry's room. And Sherry looks over at me and says, you need to come in here. And I said, okay. And that's when they were hitting her with the belt with the little bike part on it. And I went up to Danny and I grabbed it or I like, I didn't grab him because I was afraid to. I went up and I like, tapped him on the shoulder and I said, you need to stop right now. And they lifted up her shirt and her back was just, her back was black. I mean, it was black and blue and purple and yellow and it was just, it was horrible and red. And I just, and she kept holding her head like this and she had her head down and I thought, you know, her head was bleeding or something. And so... Then that's when Danny put the knife to my neck and told me, you know, you need, he told me if I didn't hit her that he was going to kill me. So I took the thing off and I, I hit her I hit her once and it was only like not even hard. It was like kind of soft. I was, I was really scared. So then... He kept going closer and he's like, do it again. And I was like, no. And I threw the belt and then Nicole grabbed it. And then I ran out of the room because my husband had gotten back after they had went to get trash bags. And then I had went to him and one of the boys, I think it was uh, Chucky, the youngest one, had told Michael what Danny did. And then Michael had gotten mad and I told him just to calm down and sit down. So I sat down on the couch with him. And then finally, you know, they left her alone for a while. And we were, they, the boys were wrestling around in the living room or something. And I was sitting on the couch because I, someone had sprayed something upstairs and it was coming down and I ended up going to the hospital because of it. And then after I got home, I, I went upstairs, Danny and Nicole were upstairs when I got home on the bed they were sleeping on. And all I said to them when I walked up was, I lost my baby. And Danny looks at me with like this stern look on his face and he said that's it I'm going to kill her and I didn't think anything of it I didn't think that he would actually do it 
And I I, I laughed, and I was like, yeah, all right. And I walked in my room. I laid down for a little bit. Well, I went back downstairs, and Vera was getting her shoes on. And this was around 9, 9.30. Yeah, it was around 9.30. <clears throat> and... I walked down and I asked her, I was like, where are you going? And she said, well, Danny and Nicole want me to go with them somewhere. I was like, okay. And I had asked her again, I was like, where are you guys going? He's, and she told me, well, I'm going to meet up with my boyfriend. I don't want to walk alone. I said, oh, okay, which her boyfriend at the time was Larry Spence. So we figured, okay, she's going to meet up with Larry and you know, she'll probably go with him for a little bit. So... They left, then about a half hour later they came back around 10, 10.05 or 10.15 and they walk in and I was in the kitchen getting um, the baby a bottle because she was almost asleep. So I was going to give her a bottle and lay her down and then Nicole walks in and she, I, she looked at me and she was shaking and she was like, she's gone. She's gone. She kept, she kept saying she's gone. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I was scared. I was like, oh, my God, please tell me you didn't do anything. And she's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And I was like, and I just, I stopped. Like, I, I couldn't talk or anything. I was like, oh, my God. And I, I ran into Sherry's room after handing the baby the bottle. And I went to grab the phone, and Danny's like, if you call the police, I'll kill you just like I did her. And I'm like, he took the phone from me, and I just stood there, and I walked over to Sherry, and I, t I just, I was like, there's no way. And then, you know, we were, I was just like, I was, I was in total shock. I couldn't believe what they had just did. And then Michael had made me something to eat, and we had went upstairs, and I was in my room, and then Danny, and Zachary and Garth had left, and they went over to Danny's sister's Jessica's house and to get drunk, I guess. I'm not sure about that story. Um, and then it was around 1 o'clock in the morning, they came home, or it was like 12, 30, 1 o'clock, they came home, and they came barging in our room, and, you know, they're all three drunk and stuff, and... I asked Danny, I was like, why'd you do it? And he's like, because I wanted to. And I was like, well, that's not a good enough reason. You know, you shouldn't have did that. That was wrong. I mean, she didn't deserve that. And all he looked, all he did was look at me, smile, and say, yes, she did. And that's all he said to me. And then he walked out. Nicole had passed out on the bed. And... I laid back down and I had my TV off and I was trying to listen, you know, see what they were saying. Well, his Danny's sister was downstairs waiting on him, I guess, to go to her house or something. And so Danny had told Nicole, I'm taking your phone and I'm going to my sister's. Nicole, she didn't say anything, so I was guessing she passed out. And so then Danny left and then we all pretty much just went to bed. I mean, well, Michael had gone downstairs because Zachary and Garth, they were drunk and they were puking and stuff. So he helped my mother-in-law take care of them. And then he went to bed around five and I finally fell asleep around three. So that's pretty much everything. <clears throat> Um, no part of talking. <laughs> um, you remember back when they were, um, when this, this assaulting that started, mm -hmm. that was in Sherry's bedroom? Yeah, um, most of it was in her room. 
Um, and then some of it also was in the living room, and I was the only one in the living room. The boys at the time were gone. They were out with their friends or something. And they had her on the ground, and they had her by her hair, and they were just hitting her head on the floor and hitting her and punching her. And they had grabbed something from outside, and they were hitting her with that. I, I It looked like a, like a crescent wrench or something. They were hitting her in the back with that and the side and stuff. And Danny would stomp. I mean, he would jump on her head. Like, he would jump up in the air and then down on her head. And mm-hmm. he would kick her. And I just, I was so disgusted by it. But every time I tried to, you know, stand up and do something, Danny would push me out of the way and tell me no. And, I mean, it's just, I wanted to stop him. And, I mean, I'm, it's just, it's, it won't be out of my head. It won't leave. And I just, I, it's, yeah. This information um, that you've said today, you didn't tell it to me on Sunday when we talked. Right. When we talked on Sunday, I was scared. And I... I couldn't remember everything. I was having a blank in my head. And I think it was because I was nervous and I was scared. And then, you know, I told my husband, I was like, I gotta fit, I gotta tell them the rest of the stuff that I know. You know, I don't wanna withhold information because I don't wanna get in trouble for that. And I said, you know, you gotta take me up there. I gotta tell them the rest of the stuff, you know. And it hit me this morning that, you know, I was like, I was just sitting in my room and I was thinking, I was like, you know, she didn't deserve this. I, I gotta, you know, I just, I gotta say what, what else happened. And I mean, I was just, I, when I get nervous and scared, I just, I, I draw a blank and I only remember certain things. And that's why I left out some stuff on Sunday, but I just, I wanted to come in today and tell you the rest of the stuff that happened. Okay. So. So Sunday when you when you were in here to, mm-hmm. and talking to me, you know, what did we discuss? Why you were there talking? I mean, what what did we were investigating? Vera's um, missing or. Vera, yeah. Yeah. Vera was missing. Mm-hmm. Right. If you you knew that she was missing, but you knew something else had happened to her. Mm-hmm. Okay. What did they tell you happened? Am I allowed to say what they told me? Absolutely. I I wouldn't be allowed to. That's why I'm not you to tell me what you know. I mean, Shannon, that's that's what's in here. Yeah. Um, Well, what they told me. Who told you? Yeah, and who? Danny, Danny and Nicole had told me that they had slit her throat all the way around or yeah all the way around and that they had stabbed her under her left breast and um and that they had stabbed her in the heart and they had um took the knife and they put it up her um behind and they had twisted and yet they stuck it up her vagina and they also did the same thing and who, who was actually saying that though which one of them nicole was telling said, me? nicole told me that she was the one mainly telling me everything danny was just saying yeah and when was that um it was right it was um Right before they had left to go to Danny's sister's house. Okay. Remember around what time that was? Well, they got home around 10.05, 10, 10.15, so they left around 11. Um, I'd say probably around 10.45, maybe, okay. somewhere around there. And they told me that they wanted to make sure that she wasn't alive 
So they put her on the railroad tracks and they laid her across them to make sure that a train had hit her. And I got scared. And I just, I started crying. I just, I didn't know what to believe. I didn't even know if it was true or if they were lying or if it was a joke or something. I just. What time is this? Sorry. That's right. What time um, is this? Again? Around 10, uh, 1045. How long is there been long? Almost an hour. Okay. And Vera had left with them. Did not come back. Right. Correct. We, when they came home, they hadn't said anything right at that point. And we thought that she had went with her boyfriend, Larry, because she usually, usually she'll go and meet with him and just hang out for like an hour or something. And we thought that she had went with him to hang out or went to her mom's and, or something. And, but then when they came in and told me, I just like, I said, no, it's not true. And then eight o'clock, you guys show up. And I was like, oh my God, the nuts. I just like, I got really scared. Who else was in the room that told you? No, it was just me. Where were we at? In the kitchen. I was getting a bottle for the baby. And nobody else was around? The, the boys were, the boys were upstairs and Michael was in Sherry's bedroom. Kevin was he was in the living room rolling cigarettes, I think. And the rest of the boys were upstairs with their friends and I was in the kitchen getting a bottle for the baby. I was the only one in the kitchen and then that's when Nicole came in and told me what they did. How long after you got back from the hospital before they left the bed? I got home at eight o'clock, so it was about an hour and a half before they left with her. It was around 9.30 that they left. And who all knew that you had a miscarriage? Everybody in the house. I, when I came home, I, I went straight upstairs and then I came downstairs after Danny had told me that's it, she's, she's dead and I walked downstairs and then I told Sherry and I told the rest of them and I didn't think anything would really happen, I guess. I just, he didn't seem like that kind of person. I mean, to my, to my point, you know, he didn't seem like that kind of guy. Even though you'd seen him beating her? Yeah. You didn't seem like that kind of guy? It, it was just, it was, I was really confused and I was like, I said, I've been, and it's been like really hard for me because I see my mom go through the same thing. She was beaten and abused and I've been through it. But I guess I never look at as, I never look at a guy who beats a person as someone who could really kill someone. I just, it's never really clicked in my mind, and then that night it really did it. I realized that it is it's possible, <laughs> and I just. How did uh, Zachary react when he found out that you had lost the baby? Zachary, he gave me a hug and said that he was sorry, and that. He wishes that I didn't, and he was just, he was calm. I mean, he wasn't like you know mad or crazy or anything. He was just upset. Let's back up to the spray. Who sprayed? I don't know. No, I somebody who was upstairs 
Um, was Vera upstairs? She was upstairs, and I I wasn't upstairs. I was sitting on the couch that's closest to the upstairs door, and I'm, we don't know, or we're not sure if she sprayed it because, you know, she just wanted to see what it was. I don't, I don't know, and then... She got blamed for it, though, correct? Yeah, they blamed her for it. Nicole and Danny did. None of us did. We we thought, you know, maybe one of the boys had done it or something, and just like, I don't know. But then when I got the smell of it, that's what caused me to go to the hospital. So you're telling me that Danny threatened to kill her, and then Danny and Nicole leave with her, and it doesn't register to you what's going to happen. Yeah. After they beat her repeatedly all day long. I, it didn't click in my head until they left. And what happened on the day prior, on Friday? What did you see Danny and Nicole to do her on Friday? The, they, they, didn't really, they didn't do anything on Friday. They just, I mean, I don't know what the difference was between Saturday or Friday, but Friday was like, they were gone most of the day. They were walking to see his sister at Wendy's, and hit them and the boys, they went for a walk, and they were gone most of these Friday. And then Saturday, it's like, I don't know what changed. Something did, and it scared me. So you decided to come in here on Sunday and, and not be forthcoming with the information that you had. I kind of remember everything at the time. I was... Uh, Shannon, let's this, this stop that, okay? I don't believe you, okay? Lord. I, I would believe more that you were scared than I would believe that you don't remember. Because your memory right now is pretty damn good three days later. When we're, when we're sitting in the room, and I'm telling you, we're here, we're, you know, Vera's missing, we want to make sure she's okay, nothing's happened with her, and you got all this information, I mean, you can't tell me that you didn't remember that on Sunday. I mean, can you honestly sit here and sit, tell me that on Sunday you didn't remember this stuff? Mm-hmm. You sat across the table, you knew she was dead. You and everybody else in that house knew she was dead. Is that true? No. Um, everybody had their suspicions about it. In the limited time that we have been inside that house, I don't believe for a second that everybody in that house didn't know that Beer was dead. I don't believe it. You're in here because you believe you're in trouble. It's time to start getting yourself out of that hole. And that means telling us the truth about everything, okay? I mean, it's it's time for damage control, okay? What we need to know, and we've been kind of getting there slowly but surely with you, and I think you're trying to be honest with you. I think you're scared. Yeah, we're really okay. scared. We can appreciate that, okay? But sugarcoating it, trying to protect other people, this is not going to help you, okay? It's not going to help anybody else either because we already know a lot of stuff. Yeah. And for you to come in here to lie, it's only going to make it worse on you and everybody else involved, okay? Um, I mean, obviously, you know beer is dead. Beer was murdered, okay? And whether you want to accept it or not, you're a part of it. Were you holding the blade? Did you do what was done to her? Certainly not. Okay. But you have 
kept information from us during the course of this investigation. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's 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 try and fix this as best we can. Okay, and we need you to be honest about everything that happened. Everything. Okay, so let's start back over. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. You want to do that, Liz? Let's go back. To I mean, should we go back as far as uh, when we moved into the house? You think? That, that, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that would have been about a, what we sat or you say about a week ago. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Well, we could start before that. I mean, really, what was happening? You know, with, with, with Vera. Okay. You you said that the, you, when I talked with you on Sunday, one of the things you said was some of the the, the stuff that was happening, her being Vera being beat up. That this didn't happen until Danny and Nicole moved in, mm -hmm. and you said that was about a week ago. But we know, okay, from other police reports and everything, that that's not true. Right. Okay. So let's let's start a little bit deeper with this, and let's get let's get the information on, on what's going on, because it's, it it is quite obvious that it wasn't just Danny and Nicole. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you want me to start where I moved in, or when? When was that? Um, I moved in with them in October of last year. You and Mike married at that time? Yeah, married October 4th, yeah. How long did you and Mike have together? Three months. I... Before I moved in with them, I had stayed with them a couple of times. I mean, almost, I mean, obviously not. I didn't know anything at that time what was going on. Um, when I moved in with them in October, the first, I want to say the first maybe two or three weeks, everything was fine. Um, that. And then there started, you know, she was getting smacked and stuff because she was, she tried to hurt the baby, I guess. Um, the baby was walking around the table and she had pushed the baby and the baby had fell and hit her head on the corner of the coffee table and knocked the breath out of her and she couldn't breathe or anything. And... So she ended up getting hit for that. Right. Is that Zachary. Zachary did. Okay. And then... Did you actually see that yourself, or is this something that you were told? Something I was told. I okay. didn't see it. Did you see the results of her being hit? And she had a black and blue eye. Yeah, okay. she had a black okay. eye. And then... Um, and then, you know, after that, everything had settled down for a while. And then, if she, um, she was, if she was doing um, Sherry's feet, like if she was wrapping them or something, and she would hurt her, then she would get smacked in the head um, by Zachary, I think it was, and then, or if she was around the baby, then she would get yelled at, but she wouldn't get hit. She would just get yelled at um, because they didn't want her around the baby because they think that she tried to kill the baby. And then for the next, I would say, until after Christmas, Everything was good until after then because she was in her room, I guess, and they have a memorial table in her room for their son, Punky, or Kevin Jr., and some stuff came up missing off of it, and they blamed her for it, and they had, Zachary had hit her and said that if he had taken anything, or if she had taken anything off the table again, then, you know, he was going to smack her again or something. So, 
she started listening after that, and then in January, uh, she had gotten a, uh, think, I think that was the time that she had a broken nose, and the cops were called, and she had to go to the hospital, and um, that was from getting hit like this, and then like this in the front by... One, the first time that she got hit in the nose, it was by um, Larry Spence, I think it is. He hit her once in the nose, and then Zachary had hit her again because she was trying to pick up the baby or something. And then after that, it was okay. And then trying to think if it was February or the end of January. She had went, she had went, it was after Scotty had gotten home from prison and um, she had started, she became his, his sex partner or whatever you call them. And she had been upstairs with him in his room, but she was coming down the stairs, and I was told that she fell. I don't know if she fell or if she was pushed down the stairs. I was just, I was told she was, she fell. And then, um, and then around, it was the middle of February, she had, she was, um, she was wrapping, uh, Sharon's feet and she had hurt her to the point where she ended up having to go to the hospital, I think, and Zachary had hit her three, four times, um, once in the face. I know, twice in the face, and then once in the side, I think. And then this month, everything, and that Zachary hadn't hit her until after Danny and Nicole had showed up. So from the time I've been there until now, that's all I've really seen, other than what I've been told by them. And... So who, <clears throat> who, out of all that stuff you just told us, mm -hmm. some of it you actually saw, some of it you didn't actually right. see, correct? Right. Who have you actually seen hurt, hit, however you want to say, an assault, Vera? I've seen... You've the, actually seen, now what you've heard, what right. you have seen yourself. I've seen Larry do it once, which was the nose, because she wouldn't listen to him or something. And then I seen Zachary the rest of the times, other than what I was told. And what I was told, they wouldn't tell me who did it. So I don't know who did those or. Time, Larry, said, police were there. You said Larry and Zach had done that. Right, where we had hit her like this in here, and Zachary had went up like that. Did you see Zachary hit that? I seen Zachary and I seen Larry both do that. Let's go back to Saturday morning again. Okay. okay. Well, let's go back to Friday. We've heard some things that happened on Friday as well. Possibly with Danny and a knife that she may have been stabbed in the left leg. Yeah. Um, I didn't see it happen. Um, I was actually upstairs when that one happened. Um, but I was told that it was Danny that did it, that he had stabbed her in the leg because. Because she had said something that something like 
Nicole was her girlfriend or something. Because I guess Vera wanted to be, you know, a lesbian or something. And she had said something about Nicole was her girlfriend and Danny didn't like it. And I guess that he took the knife, which is the green handled knife, and he had stabbed her in the, I think it was her thigh. I think it was her, the, um, yeah, that part right there, the top part of your leg. Um, but I didn't see it happen. I, I was told about it. Zachary, I told me. Do you remember what day that was? He told me, it was Friday night that he told me. And it was, he said it was uh, Friday morning happened, I think. That at one, that one person from one had I had heard right. possibly something that on Friday. Yeah, yeah, he told me it was Friday morning that it happened, but I was sick. I was sick most of the day. I mean, I was downstairs some of the day on Friday, but I was sick most of the day. So I was upstairs laying down and stuff. And then when I came down to um, use the restroom and take a shower at night, Zachary had told me what happened and she, uh, then Vera showed me her leg, and the wound was like that big, and it wasn't maybe that deep. So you go to bed Friday night, mm -hmm. and you get up Saturday morning. You said it was real early, right? Yeah, I got up at 5 to go to the food giveaway at 5 30. Then you were gone for a few hours? I was gone until about 10 30. It was between 10 30 and 11 when we got home. Everybody's sleeping, but you wake Chuck, you wakes up. Right. Okay. And walk, start walking us through the day. Okay. Okay. After we got home, Chucky had woken up, and then everybody was still asleep. Sherry was dozing off from her medicine. She was half awake, half asleep. Um, and then I had gotten a baby and I had gotten her out of her playpen thingy and I had changed her diaper and then I had put her in the high chair and I gave her breakfast and then Danny and Nicole had come downstairs and they had woken Zach up by stomping down the stairs and because Zach sleeps on the couch downstairs so after Zach Gray woke up he was well he was like laying on the couch watching TV I had went in and gave the baby a bath and then I had gotten her dressed and I had put her down so she could go play and then I I had went upstairs to get something. I think it was my phone I went to get, and then I came back downstairs. And then that's when I seen Mom, or Cheryl was awake. She was sitting up. Vera was in front of her, wrapping her feet. And then that's when I, she, she looked at Danny, because she, she has eyes that just look around, you know, she's one of them girls that just look around. And she, she looked over at Danny and looked away. And then I seen Nicole put her fist up like this, and then she went like this to her head. Well, it was in the back of her head. She made her go like this, and she made her go forward. And then Danny came up and kicked her in her back on her right, her left side in the back. And then after she was done doing that, she had gotten up and went into the bathroom and then that's when Nicole had followed her into the bathroom and had put her head in the toilet and made her, I guess, drink the water. And then she had, when she was done, 
she um they are, are Nicole had told Vera to use a toothbrush up her her um, her behind and then use it to brush her teeth and then after she was done that then that's when Nicole had came out and told me what she had just told Vera to do. And then she when Vera was done, she was holding her face or she Nicole had came after she had told me what she was doing, she started laughing and stuff. And I guess they thought it was funny. And then Vera had came out and she like started gagging and stuff because she said it tasted nasty. She said, she said that she felt sick. And then they had made her go in the kitchen and drink, um, I think it was the dish soap that they had sitting on the counter. And at that point, that's when I got up and I told them, you know, you guys need to stop. You're going to end up hurting her. You're going to end up killing her. You guys need to stop. And then Danny and Nicole had just kept, they just laughed at me. And then Danny had taken the ketchup and poured it on her head. And he caught her a pig or something. And she, that's when Vera started to cry and said, stop it. And then I went in the kitchen and I told Vera, you know, go wash your hair. Go wash the stuff out of your hair and go sit in there in, in mama's room. And so when she was done washing her hair, she went in there and sat she had in this like little corner between the TV and the dresser. And she sat right there. And then Danny and Nicole, they were sitting in the living room or, yeah, they were sitting on the couch. But then Danny had gotten up to go in and talk to Sherry, which she was half asleep and half awake still. So she was laying there and she was talking to Danny and I had one in there and I, then that's when I seen Danny pick up the belt and at first he was just hitting her with the belt, just the regular belt. And I just, I stared at him and I just, I didn't know what to do. And then Afterwards, I seen Nicole grab this a black piece for the handlebars of the bike, and they put they wrapped it around the the belt part, the loop area, and they put it around there, and they took the belt, and they were hitting her repeatedly over and over and over again, and I tried to get in front of Danny to stop him, and he just he pushed me back and I fell onto the bed and he told me don't get in my way or I'll hit you too and so I just I started shaking and everything and then he handed me the belt and he had told me he's like I want you to hit her right now and then he put the knife to my neck and he told me you're gonna do it or I'll kill you and I got scared and I, I told him I was like you take that off of there I'm not hitting her with that. So he took that off and I took the belt and I just, I didn't really hit her. I like, it just like, it kind of like smacked or tapped her on the back. And he told me to do it again. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. And he just, he kept the knife there. And the boys came in and said, Danny, you need to stop this before you end up killing her and Vera. And then Danny's like, whatever. What boys, what boys came in? Uh, Garth and Chucky, the two younger ones, came in. And they had both said, you need to stop before you kill them both. And so Danny put the knife away, and I threw the belt on the floor, and I ran in to my husband, and I, I kind of, I just grabbed him. I, I was scared. I was really scared. So I am. Um, went back into Sherry's room afterwards and at that point I was shaking real bad from like a panic attack or something and I couldn't breathe or anything and 
Jay was trying to calm me down and stuff, and then, you know, Vera was sitting on the floor, and she was, and she was like in a, she had her hands like this and her knees up to her chest, and I asked her if she was okay, and she, she just shook her head, and she goes like this, and I looked at Sherry, and I was like, she's not okay, and then, you know, I was getting ready to pick up the phone to call for an ambulance or something, and then Danny came in and told me, who are you calling, and I was, and I told him, I was like, I'm going to call to get, you know, to get her an ambulance, because she needs help, and he said, no, you're not, because then the cops will show up here, and I'm not going to jail, and I told him, I was like, I was like, well, I need to, she needs help, and so he took the phone from me, and uh, I did I don't have minutes on my phone, and no one else was home that had a phone. Kevin was, him and Michael had left to get trash bags or something, and no one else had a phone that I could use. And so then um, I just sat there, and they had Nicole had sat there right in front of Vera, and she took Vera's head, and she had her hand, I mean, she had handfuls of hair, and she just grabbed her head, and she kept pounding it on the floor. And I kicked Nicole, and I told her, you need to F and stop right now. And Nicole said no, and then Nicole just started screaming something. She, she just, she kept, she said something, and Vera started crying and stuff, and she just said, she kept saying, okay, 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 I'm sorry. And then Danny came in, and then that's when Danny started stomping on her head and kicking her and jumping on her head and punching her and everything. And I just, I was in disbelief, and then I just, my heart was racing so fast, and I just, so when they got home, Kevin told them, you know, stop what you guys are doing, and they listened to him, they stopped, and they went in the living room and sat, sat down, and then uh, I guess they were going to walk to um, to Wendy's or something to meet up with his sister, Desta, and so him, Nicole, Zachary, and Garth, I think, was walking, and then Zachary ends up calling Kevin and says that there's a fight or something down the street, so Kevin and Michael and Scotty and Chucky ran down there to help them, and they came back about a half hour later, and at that point, Vera was sitting, sitting in Sherry's room watching TV, um, not doing anything, just minding her own business. And I was sitting in the living room watching the baby. And then they all show back up, and Danny is like on a, he's like got an adrenaline rush or something. And then, you know, he's like all hyper and stuff. And so Nicole makes them sit down and everything, and sit around. 5.30, 6 o'clock, Vera had just finished um, doing Sherry's, had just finished dropping Sherry's feet, and then Nicole had told Vera to go in the bathroom and take a cold, a cold bath, so they made her go in there and take a cold bath and wash up and everything. And she came out, she was shivering and stuff. And then at that point, that's when uh, Danny and Nicole had taken her outside, I think in the garage or something. And they had taken the mace with them or pepper spray or whatever it's called. And they sprayed it in her face. And it was like, on, it was on her, on her left side of her face and under her neck and stuff. And she couldn't open her eyes or anything. So I told her to go in and wash her face with cold water. And I told her, you know, just 
put a wash rag on your eye, maybe that'll help, I don't know. So then she did that, and when she came back out, she went in and sat in Sherry's room, and then everything kind of calmed down for a little while, and then that's when I ended up having to go to the hospital around 6, and around, it was around 6.30, I went to the hospital, and then I got home around, I was at 8, 8.15, and I had went upstairs, and then at that point, that's when Danny and Nicole were upstairs, and I had walked by them, and they asked what happened, and I had told them, and then that's when Danny had said, she's dead, and I went in my room, because I just said I had met, I had taken medicine at the hospital and I was tired and I wasn't thinking straight so I just kind of you know I didn't think anything of it and then I went in and laid down for a little bit but then I went back downstairs about nine fifteen I went downstairs and that's when I seen Barry getting her shoes on and she said that she was. She said that she was going to meet up with her boyfriend, Larry. And then that's when Danny and Nicole said, well, we'll walk with you. And she, at, at that point, Vera had asked Scotty if, she, if he would walk with her because I think she knew something was going to happen. And so... But Danny had ran upstairs and told Scotty, no, you're not going with us. And if you do, then I'll hurt you too. Or I'll hurt you or something, that's what Scotty told me. And then they had walked out around 9.30, around 9.30, 9.35. And then I had went upstairs and laid down for about 10, 15 minutes, and then I needed to go to the bathroom, so I went back downstairs, and it was around almost 10 o'clock, and I I was in the kitchen. All Everybody else was upstairs besides Kevin and Sherry, and Michael was on the computer, I think, and I went in the kitchen to get a bottle for the baby, and then... Then we seen Nicole and or I heard Danny and Nicole come in the house. Nicole comes in the kitchen as I'm getting a bottle and she looks at me and her face is all red and she just looks at me, she's panting all heavy and she says, It's done, it's done and she's gone and I'm like, What? And I just I couldn't believe what I was hearing and then Danny just kept saying, Yep, yep and that's all he would say and then that's when they told me all the details. And I was in complete shock, and I went in to grab the phone, and Danny had got to it first, and he had called somebody, I don't know if he called his sister, or I don't know who he called, and... Whose phone? The house phone, I think. Yeah, I think it was the house phone he grabbed. And then... I was I handed the baby the the bottle and I had went upstairs or no, I had went into Sherry's room and I had I was like, It can't be true, it can't be true and she's like, What? And I was like and I, all I kept saying was, I don't know, I don't know and I was in complete shock and I don't know if Nicole had told Sherry what she had told me. I haven't been told by anybody else, you know. I don't, I, I know they had told Scotty. So I'm pretty sure they told Scotty too. Um, but I'm not sure if they had told, if they told anybody else in their house. And then after I was done in Sherry's room. I had went upstairs to lay down, and then Danny and Nicole, Danny, Nicole, Zach, and Garth 
had went to his sister's house to drink. Then they came home around 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And then finally everything settled down. Nicole passed out. And then that's when Danny had told Nicole I'm taking your phone. And he went to his sister's and then I fell asleep around 3 o'clock. It's the phone house, house phone number. Uh, five. Is it the same number you gave us right now? Or do you have the number? Okay, so that. Yeah. I don't have minutes on it though, Sean, first. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is that like a phone, a standard phone, or is that a cell phone? That's a house? standard, standard house phone. Okay. Yes, exactly. You mentioned that you thought or you knew that Scotty knew what had happened. I'm not sure if he does. I mean, they had they had went upstairs and they were talking to him. So I'm guessing that maybe they told him what they told me. I mean, he hasn't said anything to anybody that he does know, but I'm a, I'm guessing that they told him what they told me. Where was Zach and Garth when they came home? Zach, when Danny and Nicole came home, or after they left here. Zach and Garth. We're upstairs in Gar's room, I think, and Scotty was in his room. Where's Kevin? Kevin was downstairs rolling cigarettes. Which room? The living room. Okay. And Sherry was in her room. You want to smoke or anything? Uh, sure. Mark them away, look at Sunday. Yeah, it's all over Facebook. <laughs> okay. Some of it's probably some of it's not probably. But we know I know from talking with other people, okay, that your story, the stuff you've told us, there's a lot of that that, that that you know it's matching up. But I also know that there's parts that are being left out. Okay. You you had more of an involvement in what this stuff that happened. Than what you're saying, okay? Based off of what these people are telling me. So that's what we want is to know your involvement, your total involvement in it, okay? You came up here for a reason today. Yeah. Okay? What was that reason? To tell you what I knew. Okay. We want to know everything, your involvement. So we know it's not going to be pretty. Okay. But I want to know the total involvement. I don't understand. Like, we're not saying that you had a knife. Or that you were part of that. We're not saying that. Okay. We're talking about starting Saturday morning that you and other people were involved with Vera, not just Nicole and not just Dan. Okay. And this is coming from multiple sources. It's coming from all over the place, okay? We know Zach's involved. 
we don't know exactly what how you're involved. Um, we know about you hitting her with the belt. That part's true. I'm having some issues with your version of the story, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, and in the big scheme of things, in the big picture, it's way down here. Her death is way up here. Okay. So you need to think about how honest you want to be with us. Okay. And if you need to go home and, and, and relax and, and maybe come back tomorrow, um, you know, we're trying to be as honest with you as we can. Okay, you're in trouble. Okay, you are in trouble. You lied in the course of a murder investigation. You just straight out lied. There's no other way to describe it. You completely lied. But I don't think you're the only one who's lied. And I don't think you need to go down for a bunch of people that you've known since October. Okay? You see where I'm going with that? You are not a Brooks. You married into the family. I hate to see you go down for these people. Okay? You've been seeing how they treat people. They treat people worse than dogs, worse than animals. You've been watching this since October. I don't think that's part of you. Or you wouldn't be here right now talking to us. Because if you were like them, you wouldn't you wouldn't come down here. Yeah. Okay? So if that's what you want to do, if you want to go relax, think about I don't I wouldn't encourage you to talk to anybody about this. Um, uh, I including them. I just Okay. And I understand that your family right now, but if the shoe's on the other foot, they throw you under the bus bigger than life. Okay. I don't think you're the only one. And knew what happened. I think Zach had a big part in this whole thing. I really, really do. I believe that too. And I don't think Sherry's all that innocent in this either. So if you need to go home and collect your thoughts, I would encourage you to do that. And we'll give you one more chance to come in here and tell us the complete truth. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. Is that what you'd like to do? You've been in here for a while? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Am I gonna get arrested? Like, am I gonna go to jail? Like, I don't know. It all depends on how honest you are with us. So, if I come in tomorrow and tell you completely everything I know, then we'll talk about what you're. Doing. I can't make any promises because I don't know what you're gonna tell me. Right, right. Because you're not real close yet. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. okay. We'll talk about it. I can't make promises. I don't right. want. I don't want to tell you something that I can't own up to because that's not how we operate. Right. Okay. I understand. Okay. I understand. But I also know you've only been there for what? November, December, January, 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 five months. Yeah. So not even half a year yet. Yeah. And this is where you're ending up. I was. I just. Okay. And. and <laughs> I don't know Mike that well. I don't know. Is is he a true Brooks? No, no he, was, he was a transplant. He, yeah, he was uh, adopted when he was younger. Yeah. And he's been with us since he was eighteen. So. And it's my understanding that they're treating him like a chauffeur. Pretty much, yeah. And I don't know how. You know, and if Mike wants to come and talk to us, I would encourage him to do so. Because right. I don't know how deep Mike's into it right now either. Uh, he's on probation, so well, I don't know. Us, it'll be. I don't know. <laughs> Um, why don't you get out of here, um, come back tomorrow. Do you have any idea of what time you'd like to come talk to us? Um, I can come in the morning sometime if it's okay. I mean, either between... Is it about 10? Is that too early? 10, 10.30. Okay. That's fine. All right. You ask for Kurt or Scott, okay? Okay. In the okay. car. If you're comfortable talking to the two of us, we'll talk to you again. Okay. Okay. Right. But uh, just remember, we're not close yet. Right. Yeah. I know you want to do the right thing. I know you're scared. I am. I'm very scared. There's only one thing that's going to make you feel better. That's being completely honest with us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Did she have your card? Yes. You saw my card? Yeah. yeah. If for some reason you can't make it up, just give us a call. We'll figure out another time mm-hmm. that we can... Uh, Get together. Okay. All right.